This is a short video on how and why to annotate a source for the bibliography. And I also want to point you to some resources that we have for reading scholarly sources, since you have to read in order to annotate. So the how points are the three points that I've been talking about, not only with the trap test, the three points I summed up of the who, the what, and the why. And we'll look at that in specific uh, reference to an article so we can think about that. But the question of why is important. Why annotate a source? And I wanted to jump, you know, right to my last note here, that when you annotate a source, you have to critically read it and start to compare it to other sources, texts, and authors. When we do that, we can work toward developing some knowledge of a subject. Right? That's our purpose. We don't want to just have opinions or beliefs. We want to try to develop knowledge and draw on the knowledge of others in order to understand the subject that's at hand. And our goal is informed and tested knowledge, right? And that way we can work to close that gap that uh, Nietzsche is troubled by and that Engels uh, sees uh, science and historical progress as our way forward. So to think about this question in relation to our assignments in the class, you know, both the annotated bibliography, but also the source critique we'll be working toward. You know, one of the things we want to think about is who is the author? So the short question is who is the author, but you can see I have some other questions here as well. So what I want to do is open up uh, uh, a scholarly article and uh, show you some ways through the article to think about who is the author, and then we'll think about what and why as well. So this is a, a scholarly article. Pulled it from one of the databases working with a group. It's from the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. It's a review article. It has a long title, but I think we know most, if not all, of the words in the title. And we see immediately the who, right? Jennifer D. Robbins and Ashadi Otarani. And you'll notice that after them, they have these little images. Uh, and in this case, a number and a star. Over here, a number. And they both have what appears to be uh, uh, something that allows us to ID or contact them. Now I'm in a PDF, I'm not in the database, so I'll see it a little differently. The number one indicates that uh, Roberts is in the Department of Kinesiology, School of Public Health, University of Maryland. The number two indicates that Tarani is the School of Architecture and Environmental Design at the Iran University of Science and Technology in Tehran. In both cases, we have emails for these authors, uh, including the star indicates that Roberts is the corresponding author, someone we could write to if we had a question. And as I mentioned in conferences this week, I have had students contact authors with questions and occasionally they do actually get back to us. So this is a window into the who. Now this might be enough, but we could also go on the web. We could look up Jennifer D. Roberts, Department of Kinesiology, and it may be that uh, this uh, author is still there. I suspect uh, that she is, given that you know this was published in 2020. So one of the things that we immediately have is the who, right? We can look into that, and if we need to, we can research further. We could find the resumes of these writers. We could look at their publication record. We could see what else they've, what else they've published. One of the things that's interesting to me is that one of these authors is a kinesiologist, and the other works in architecture and environmental design. And so immediately I have a question of what do these two subjects have to do with each other and how do they fall under the area of that the journal, excuse me, that the journal is looking at of environment, environmental research and public health. And again, that might be something I would get into in an essay. In an annotated bibliography, I might decide if I need to say anything about where those authors are coming from. If we want to think also now also about the what, what do they claim and argue? You know, really to answer that question, we need to read the article. And for the same, for the same purpose, even thinking about why, why is the text significant for my research? So again, to answer those questions, I need to read the article, but I can pre-read the article. I can take a look at what's here. And some of the resources that I'll show you in Blackboard in a moment uh, will provide a guide to this. A scholarly article will generally have an abstract. And so you see here an abstract, which should tell us uh, the objectives, the methods, the discussion points, the findings, and their conclusion. Right? We should hear all of those things. Like what were they trying to do? 
How did they try to do it? What did they find out? And so often you'll get a good sense of that from the abstract. You may even have what you would recognize as a thesis. I'm not going to try to read through all of that here, but the abstract is where I would find that. You can also see that the text has been organized. Even from right here, we have a heading, number one, introduction, and then you'll see in italics a section under that. And if we keep going down through the text, you'll see again, number two, a, a topic, and then we have a 2.1 with italics. And I like to read for those patterns. I want to be able to see it. Fair amount of text, but we saw the one image, 2.2, .2, so we have a subsection. We do have some graphical information that will help us to understand the text. We have a 2.3. So the, the authors have uh, organized their essay into bite-sized chunks. Uh, and, you know, they're there for a purpose. Uh, we have a section 3, which looks like it also will be subdivided. In fact, if I keep scrolling down, go a little quicker, we'll see that we're using paragraphs, we're using these subsections, we're in section 3.3, now we're in section 4. And so these are organized in this case in terms of uh, discussion points. But you'll see when we get to the end here, we're in section 5. This is the conclusion. And sometimes after I read the abstract, I'll just jump and read the conclusion to see where they ended up. And that conclusion is only a paragraph long, right? So this is a conclusion that we could read next to the abstract and the introduction. And then we can go to read the middle of it. And so from this, I could probably already get a sense of what are they trying to argue. But to really answer that question, I do need to read uh, and mark up the article. The other thing we'll see here is that we do have some information about the authors and how they contributed, whether or not they got funding, uh, and any sources they'd like to acknowledge or conflicts of interest. And this is fairly typical for this kind of article. You'll also see that the last third of the text are references. How many references do they have? They're referring, they're, they're making lots of references, right? So it looks like a long article, but you're not going to read every reference. We have, you know, almost 200 footnotes, or, or rather endnotes here. So this is a scholarly article. It's been organized for us carefully, a lot of attention to references, but it's organized so that we can work our way through it. We can identify just from this article, you know, who are the authors and what are their qualifications? What are they arguing? Again, we would need to read the article to get into that. And why is it significant? That why question is partly a question for the article, partly a question for your group. So to help you uh, with these questions in Blackboard, if you go to under content to the begin here folder, and then if you drop down to the readings for the course, in the folder on resources for research and critical reading, uh, I have this text that I'm working from now, how and why to annotate. Uh, I also have a folder on reading scholarly articles. You open that folder you'll see the first uh, six texts. Actually, those are all the texts. So there's seven texts on scholarly articles, and they all give you advice on how to read a journal article, how to read social science texts, how to read a scientific paper, etc. And so if you open any one of these, you'll get some guidance along the lines of what I've just uh, presented to you. So that, in a nutshell, is uh, how to work with uh, articles, scholarly articles. And, you know, how and why to annotate a source for the bibliography. But these steps will also be use useful to you in Writing Lab 3 when we're working on the source critique.